And, Bill, you said that the decision to withdraw is the greatest success of the, quote, denial machine that the fossil fuel industry launched uh, 30 years ago. Could you elaborate on that? Sure. Sure. We now know from great investigative reporting that the fossil fuel industry knew everything there was to know about climate change in the 1980s. Uh, you know, Exxon was the biggest company on Earth. They had great scientists. Their product was carbon. Of course, they were going to study it. And their scientists told them uh, with uncanny accuracy what the temperature and the CO2 concentration would be in 2019. Understanding that this was a threat to the world, but also a threat to their business, they took the second more seriously than the first and began this decade-long process of climate, decades-long process of climate denial and delay and obfuscation, setting in motion all these kind of fake think tanks and so on and so forth. That's what came to a head at, with this withdrawal from Paris. It was the ultimate conclusion of all that work at disinformation. From one point of view, it was extremely successful. The fossil fuel industry had its most profitable years in the last three decades. Uh, on the other hand, we're now missing half the sea ice in the summer Arctic. Uh, the Great Barrier Reef is half dead. Uh, you know, the oceans are 30 percent more acidic. California is uh, on fire more weeks than not. Um, we're in deep, deep trouble. And the idea that we're just going to put our hands over our eyes, or over our ears, or over our mouth at this point is about as depressing as it's possible to get. Yeah, Bill, I wanted to ask you about the response of corporate America, specifically the automobile makers, General Motors, Toyota, and Fiat Chrysler. They've sided now with President Trump in his continuing battle with California over auto, auto emission standards. Could uh, your take on that? Uh, it is short-sighted in the extreme. They're playing the same game as everybody else, trying to get another year or two out of their business model, which at the moment is selling people ever bigger SUVs. And so they've been willing to side with the Trump administration to try and make sure we don't really do anything about fuel economy. It's obviously short-sighted. It's obvious that they're opening up the door even wider for the Europeans, for the Tesla Motors, for all the people who are actually working on the next generation of uh, mobility, not to mention the people who are working on bike paths and bus lanes. Um, um, but the problem is not that we won't get there eventually, Juan. The problem is that this is a time test. Uh, look, the the uh, scientists in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change a year ago in their last report pretty much gave us a deadline. They said that if we hadn't made fundamental transformations in our energy economy by 2030, then our chances of meeting even the modest targets we set at Paris were essentially nil. Uh, that means we don't have, you know, four-year presidential terms to waste. It means we don't have five-year product development cycles to waste. It means everybody has to be going as hard as they can right now. And yet, corporate America is divided, Bill. And if you can talk about this, on the one hand, uh, you have uh, General Motors, Toyota, Fiat, uh, Fiat Chrysler siding with the Trump administration uh, against California. But then you have this slew of other automakers, including Ford, Honda, and Volkswagen, which have sided uh, with California's right to set pollution limits. Why this um, division? Well, it pretty much reflects who's most scared of Trump and who's furthest along in coming up with cars that can meet emission requirements. Um, look, all the automakers know better. They were all embarked on a course of lower emissions since the Obama administration. Uh, General Motors, Toyota, those people are just trying to suck up some more gravy for a few more years. And it's a disgrace. Uh, but the same disgrace is happening in the utility industry. It's happening in uh, agribusiness. It's happening um, everywhere where everyone's trying to maintain their business model just a little while longer. That just a little while longer are the years that will break the climate system of the planet.